Okay, so it's day eight on the Camino Primitivo. It's uh, about quarter to seven in the morning. I'm just leaving the albergue. And yeah, today I'm just leaving uh, Granda, Granda de Salime. Salime. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be about 25 kilometer walk today. Quanto cuesta? Uno Uno? Oh, one. Oh. Yeah. Hablas inglés. Sorry? <laughs> Hablas inglés. <laughs> and here I am I'm trying, trying and I'm trying my hardest here. <laughs> uh, okay, enjoy the coffee. Thank you. No necesito cambio. No necesito cambio? No. Okay. Muy bien. Gracias. I'm in the village of Castro and uh, yeah, just tiny little spot here, this albergue, and uh, just grabbed a cafe con leche. Uh, and no breakfast this morning. Might get something to eat further on, or uh, I have an apple pack I can eat. But yeah, nice, pretty little town. Nice stonework everywhere. It's foggy. Okay, so I'm either coming out of the low cloud or the fog is clearing. I think it's above the cloud and it's nice. It's got some sun and a little bit of warmth now instead of dampness and, you know, yeah, dampness. So it's good. I'll show you what it looks like up here. Okay, getting close to the top. And I saw around the bend there's a bit of a lookout. So it's quite the view. Let's have a look. interesting thing is here in Galicia the shell that is the marker it changes direction so up until this point I've been following the bottom of the shell would point which way to walk now it's the other way it's the top of the shell I don't know why it changes uh, 
you know, maybe if I uh, discover, I'll put some information in this video. Maybe uh, someone can just leave a comment under the video and uh, tell the world. But yeah, it changes direction. So it's a nice mountain range in the background, eh? Anyhow, here I go. Hola. Okay, so I'm just starting the ninth day on the Camino San Camino Primitivo. Uh, it is uh, just early seven o'clock and I have discovered that my walking poles have been stolen here at uh, Cantabrico Alberque Pension. I spoke to who I think the manager, and he's pretty much doing nothing about it, saying that they cannot be responsible. They, in the front door, they have this place for the walking poles, and they were all there. And this morning I get up, and mine are gone, and at least one other gentleman's are gone. So, yeah, extremely upset, walking uh, 320 kilometers, and still have almost 200 kilometers to go and now on top of everything else I don't have walking poles which have been useful I've talked about them and uh, yeah now I need to do the walk without them unless I can find a place to buy replacements uh, what a way to start the day to find something that really is an essential piece of equipment in my opinion out here has been stolen. Needless to say, I'm fucking pissed. And it wasn't just my poles. There was another gentleman and his were missing. And, you know, I don't want to make assumptions, but I would assume that he was much older than me. I think that he'd probably be in his late 60s, maybe 70s. And, uh, this is just, uh, such an annoying way to start the day. You know, I have 25 kilometers to walk today. Going downhill, I already feel it in my knees and down to my ankles. <sighs> yeah, you know, there's a, like, a Bien Camino is what everybody says. And this morning, I just think bullshit. So what's really terrible now is that now, you know, I just passed a group, five or six people, and I'm looking at their poles to see if they're my poles. And this is not good. This is not why I'm here on the Camino. But 
I think this is like human nature. You know, now I want to find them. Who took them? Was it another walker? Dirt bag? Or someone who just wandered in off the street to find some holes for whatever reason? Mess up someone's day. But now I cannot help but to be looking for them. <laughs> Let's hope I don't find them. Because if I do, I think that there will be a fair amount of anger released on whoever took them. El Toro. Muy grande. just got a message through whatsapp and apparently they have found my walking sticks now i'm gonna say he sent a photo he said uh they were in the bucket and there's no way they were in the bucket because i pulled everything out of the bucket <laughs> but regardless they found them and it seems like they're going to arrange to get them to me which would be very good so we'll see how this day continues. So I sent another message back and uh, yeah, I guess he's gonna drive the poles down here. Hopefully they're mine, they look like they're mine. So I'm just gonna walk down and wait at the road. You know, it makes me, you know, I, because then there's a thing, right? I ask where, where were they? He says they were in the bucket and uh, not nah, like I pulled all the poles out of the bucket and it's, so then after this exchange, uh, you know, I'm thinking to myself, is there a way I didn't see them? But I just spoke to another uh, Peregrino, who was there when I was having my panic attack. <laughs> and he was saying, no, no, you emptied the bucket. You went through everything. So that's good. So all I can think is that someone moved them and they were somewhere else, or someone had them and realized they weren't theirs, you know, and then put them back this morning or something. Lesson learned. Don't trust people. 
not really well sort of that people make mistakes shit happens and in this situation i need to just keep my gear with me so the poles no more putting them in a bucket at a door with everyone else's poles because that's just relying on everyone else to uh, be responsible and pay attention so anyway he said he's going to be about 15 minutes so i'm just going to uh, wait down here at the road and hopefully he will be here soon I'm happy again. Okay, so I have the poles back. Someone did take them and put them back because my uh, tips are missing. So I have uh, special tips for the hard surface, the road, and then they have spikes for the soft. And it's okay, as long as I can, this will help stabilize, you know, use my whole body instead of just my legs. It's a little annoying, you know, it's gonna be clicking, clicking, clicking everywhere, but uh, I can buy new tips, so no problema. So day nine on the Camino, and every day I say something about how I'm feeling, mostly physically to talk about. Today, I'm tired, I guess. Um, the main pain I have is in my left big toe, where I have this blister thing happening and has been since day one. I think it's from the canoe trip I did a week before coming to Spain. It's on the top, just behind the toenail. And because my feet are damp, it just doesn't get better. In fact, it's hurting more. It's uh, almost burning a little. So I'm gonna get today done and then have a closer look at it. Might have to make tomorrow a shorter day. Something, you know, just to let my feet dry, take care of it. But now, you know, it's a when I step and roll up on my toes, there's a fair amount of pain, just like a sharp, but enough that it's that, you know, wincing. So have a Hmm. around about a week left of this walking so I definitely need to take care of it aside from that my back's fine uh, again not my calves but the muscles in front of my calves my shins uh, those muscles are tender uh, my shoulders from the straps hurt um yeah, that's about it, physically. Mentally, I guess mentally, Camino's giving me time to think about things, think about life, think about my toe. <laughs> uh, one thing I've thought is that, uh, you know, I have uh, uh, this drive to not give up on this physical challenge, the Camino. I uh, told somebody that, uh, somebody who suggested that I don't have to do it, that it's okay to quit if it gets too hard. And I said, like, I'm not, I'm not going to give up a physical challenge. 
So I've been reflecting on that and uh, in contrast, like my uh, emotional or mental strength. And it's interesting that I always uh, put emphasis on, you know, staying physically strong. And I know there are things that I need to work on in life. And so I think that when I finish the Camino, I will spend a bit more time developing skills for uh, like emotional and mental strength. I'll continue to, you know, try to maintain my physical strength. But when I think about, you know, what are my strong points? What are my weak points? Uh, there's definitely room for improvement in the mental side of things. So, yeah, I might get back to meditation, like uh, maybe counseling, reading books on this thing. And, uh, yeah. Life is about being the best person you can be, or at least it is for me. So this is an area I can improve on. Nice view. It's cloudy, but you can still see through the clouds. It's a nice view. Well, looks like the rain is up ahead, and it is, uh, check the watch, 12.36, Dose y Media, and that's about when the rain was forecast, so yeah, it's on schedule. Um, not that far from my destination, El Cadavo, and uh, it's a uh, village of Okadavo. There's flies today. Sorry, I'm waving my hands around for a reason. Flies. Like I was saying, not far from Okadavo. I think I'm probably one or two kilometers away. Probably 20 to 30 minutes. So it's not too bad. Um, hopefully I don't get rained on, but it does look like that's some pretty heavy rain coming over the hill over there now. We'll see. Yep, that cloud is certainly dropping. Okay, so just entering into Okadavo. It's good. Just have to find a place to stay. Okay, so I decided to get a private room. Oh, I didn't film the outside yet. Um, I'll look up what the name of this place is. Eligio. 
Eligio boarding house. Um, it's right next to uh, San Mateo Albergue Hostel. Hostel. But yeah, you know, as I was walking, you know, like I, I, I don't want to say I'm over the whole walking pole incident. Um, I don't want to be a barking dog about it. But, uh, yeah, you know, like I, the thing is, in these places, often, and even in some of the community, you know, like the bars, the taverns, the restaurants, uh, you arrive and you have your backpack and your walking poles. And often I've been asked to, like, told no backpack, right? Or no, don't bring my walking poles in there, or both. And I have to leave them at the door. Usually there's a place for them. And this is fine, you know, like it's their business and I understand. Uh, and the same with the Albergues, right? They usually they have a place. You take your shoes off and you put your shoes there. You, they'll have a spot probably for your walking poles. And uh, sometimes they have a cabinet that you can put your backpack in. And sometimes the cabinet has a lock and sometimes it doesn't. And this is the thing that it's, it, the situation is somewhat out of my control of how to secure my things. So last night my cabinet didn't have a lock and I was told to put my poles in a bucket, basically. And shoes almost always go somewhere else because they're stinky and you don't want them in the room. Well, you know, this is no good for me now. I was trusting on people, you know, that they would be like me, honest, and more than a four-year-old and have learned the lesson to not touch other people's fucking stuff unless you have permission. But clearly that's not the case. I can't trust people. I would like to. I would like to give everyone the benefit of the doubt that you're going to be as good as me. But you're not. You're not going to be as good as me. You might be as good as you, but not everybody is as good as us. And, uh, yeah, I just can't, uh, I can't risk losing my shit, right? I don't want to wake up and my watch be gone. You know, I sleep with it on typically, but, you know, my walking pole's missing again. I don't want to, you know, I'm carrying my computer so that I can charge batteries and transfer video files and all of this. You know, my passport, my wallet, all these things. I just can't risk losing anything. Um, I've lost too much in the past year. And I just can't keep losing things. So, staying in a private room, my things go inside here, I have a key, door is locked, it's good. I can control that. I can control it. Downside is I'm not interacting with anybody and so I have met some nice people along the way. You know, some people that maybe I would like to talk to again. Private room. I'm not going to see them in the hallway or in the dorm or the kitchen area. So. Yeah, anyway. I would like to know who messed with my stuff, you know? They changed the trip plan on me. They took my, or misplaced my tips Right? They have uh, derailed me temporarily. I'd like to know. They owe me an apology. And some euros for new tips to my polls. Anyway, I'm going to shower, get cleaned up. 
change. Maybe go find some food.